DNS zones. A DNS zone is simply a file on your DNS server that manages a portion of a domain namespace. So to create a new zone, we'll click on Start, Administrative Tools, and then we'll select the DNS MMC. Now before we actually go ahead and create a new zone, I want to talk about these forward lookup zones and reverse lookup zones. When we convert a host name to an IP address, we're actually performing a forward lookup. The DNS server will check to see if it has a host or an A record for the name it needs to find. And if it finds the record, it sends the associated IP address back to the requesting DNS client. A reverse lookup is where we know the IP address, but we don't know the host name. So our DNS server, if configured with a reverse lookup zone, will check the IP address against its records and then it will return the host name. Okay, now with that basic explanation out of the way, and we'll talk more about this later, we'll right click on our forward lookup zones and we'll select new zone. Now this just starts up the new zone wizard, so we'll click next. Now you can see we have three options here. We can create a primary zone, a secondary zone, and a stub zone. And also, if our DNS server happens to be a domain controller, we have the option here of storing our zone in Active Directory. Now, a primary zone is the first zone that's created on a traditional DNS server. Primary zones hold read and write copies of the zone, which means that they can be updated by this DNS server. A secondary zone is a copy of a primary zone. Now this exists on a secondary DNS server. Secondary zones are read only, which means that they cannot be updated. Now primary zones will transfer a copy of their zone to a secondary DNS server and then clients can use this secondary DNS server to resolve DNS queries faster than they might if they had to contact the primary DNS server. Now a stub zone is a forward lookup to an external domain that you'd look up quite frequently. A stub zone contains an entry for the name server of the external domain, and this record is known as a glue record. Now the advantage of using a stub zone is that your DNS server doesn't have to go out to the root and the .com servers to locate the external DNS server. That's because it's pre-configured with the IP addresses of the DNS servers, and it can forward queries for that domain directly to the right DNS server. Now if you are using Active Directory in your environment, and it's more than likely that you will be, then it's a good idea to make your DNS zones Active Directory integrated. That way you can get the security and replication benefits of Active Directory included with your DNS server. Now if your server isn't a domain controller, then you'll find that this option will be greyed out. So we'll go ahead and create a primary zone, and we won't store it in Active Directory, we'll come back and look at this option later on. So we'll choose Next. And now we're asked to configure the DNS namespace for this zone. So ours will be testdomain.com, and then we'll choose Next. Now we have to enter in the name of a DNS zone file. Now by default, it will be the namespace that we chose with a .dns at the end. Now I'm going to accept these defaults, but if we already have a DNS zone file created on another server, and perhaps say we're decommissioning that server, we could import it by choosing the second option, and then copying the file into the system root system32 slash DNS folder on this server. But as this is our first DNS server, we're just going to leave the first option here, and we'll choose next. Now we can choose whether to allow dynamic updates or not. Now what this means is whether our hosts can register themselves and create host records on our DNS server. So we have two options. We can allow both non-secure and secure dynamic updates or not to allow dynamic updates at all. Now with our non-secure option, you can see here it tells you that dynamic updates of resource records are accepted from any clients. So this means that potentially anyone can plug into our network and register their host in DNS and pollute it with a bunch of false records. So we don't want to do that, so I'm going to choose this second option not to allow dynamic updates, and I'll choose next. Okay, our wizard's finished, so we'll click finish. And now we can see here we have our testdomain.com standard primary zone. So we'll double click on our testdomain.com primary zone, and in here we can see we have three records. We have a start of authority record, an NS or a name server record, and a host record which simply references server01, which is this server, and of course it supplies its IP address. Now before we move on, let's go and take a look at reverse lookup zones. Now if you recall, a reverse lookup zone allows us to associate an IP address with a host name. 
So we'll right click on reverse lookup zones and we'll select new zone. And again, it starts up our new zone wizard, so we'll click next. Now we've seen these options before. We can create a primary zone, a secondary, a stub zone, and choose whether we want to store these zones in Active Directory. So I'm going to create a primary reverse lookup zone, and I'm going to uncheck the box to store it in Active Directory, and we'll choose next. Now when we created our forward lookup zone, we had to enter in the namespace for our domain, which was testdomain.com. In a reverse lookup zone, we need to type in the network ID of this zone. So we need to enter in here the first three octets of our network. Now we're using the 192.168.0 IP addressing scheme. So we'll enter that here in this box. Now you'll notice that down the bottom we have a 0.168.192.in.address.arpa and that has been populated automatically. Now you can select either of these two boxes and fill in whichever you prefer. Now technically, the valid reverse lookup zone requires the second formatting. Now Microsoft have just made it easier for you by automatically populating this box when you fill in the first one. Now use whatever takes your preference. I prefer to use this first one, just seems a little bit easier to me. Just remember it needs to follow the format of your network ID as you'd normally write it but in reverse, followed by this in-address.arpa. And that's because forward lookup zones work from general to specific, whereas reverse lookup zones work from specific to general. Okay, so we'll click next, and we'll need to create the standard zone file. Now up here you can see it defaults to 0.168.192.in.address.arpa.dns. And that, of course, is exactly what we saw here with the .dns thrown on the end. Now we'll accept that default, and we'll choose next. Now again, we've seen this before, we can allow both non-secure and secure dynamic updates, or we can not allow dynamic updates at all. And I'm going to leave the second option here as the default, and I'm going to choose Next. Okay, we're finished now, so we'll choose Finish. Okay, now we can see our standard primary reverse lookup zone has been created. So let's go and check out our reverse zone in action. So we'll open up a command prompt, and we'll type in NSLOOKUP, and we'll type it in for, say, NEC.com. Okay, now you can see that NSLOOKUP did bring back the IP address of NEC.com. However, up the top here we can see we can't find server name for address 192.168.0.11, which happens to be this DNS server, Server01. Now the reason it can't find it is it doesn't have a record in our reverse lookup zone. So we'll go back over here, we'll click on our reverse lookup zone, and we'll right click, we'll select a new pointer record, and in here we need to provide the name of our DNS server. Now alternatively we can click on browse, and then we can look through our forward lookup zone and find our host record, and there it is, we'll click OK. And now we need to provide in the IP address of our server, which is .11, and we'll choose OK. Now if we go back to our command prompt and issue the exact same command, we can see that the server that resolved our DNS query was in fact server01.testdomain.com or this server here. Okay, now the next thing I want to talk about is secondary DNS servers. Now we have an additional server in our network which is part of the sales.testdomain.com domain and we'll go and configure that as a secondary DNS server for our testdomain.com domain. Okay, so here we are on our server02, so we'll go and click on start administrative tools, and we'll launch the DNS MMC. Now currently, we don't actually have any forward or reverse lookup zones. So what we'll do is we'll go and right click on our forward lookup zone, and we'll select new zone. Of course, this brings up the new zone wizard, so we'll click next. So we'll choose a secondary zone, and you'll notice down here that we're unable to store our zone in Active Directory, and that's because a secondary zone is only a read copy of a primary zone. Okay, so we'll leave it at secondary zone and we'll choose next. And now we need to provide the zone name. Now our primary zone is for testdomain.com, so we'll enter that in and we'll choose next. And now we need to specify the DNS server which holds the primary zone. So ours is server01 which has an IP address of 192.168.0.11 and then we'll choose add. Now we'll choose next and we're finished. Now we'll expand our forward lookup zones and we'll select our testdomain.com zone. Now you'll notice over here that our zone transfer has failed. 
Now I wanted to show you this because you'll probably experience this in your travels. The problem here is that we're asking our secondary server to pull a copy of the zone file from our primary. But our primary is configured by default only to perform zone transfers with name servers that are listed on its name server tab. So what we'll have to do is go back to our primary DNS server, Server01, and then we'll have to add Server02 to our list of name servers. So back on our Server01 DNS server, we'll right-click on testdomain.com and we'll select Properties. Now if we go up here to our Zone Transfers tab, you can see that we are currently allowing zone transfers, but only to servers that are listed on the Name Servers tab. So if we go to our name servers tab, we can see the only name server we have listed is server01 or this DNS server. So to be able to transfer a copy of our zone file to server02, we need to click on add. So we'll enter in server02.sales.testdomain.com and then we'll click on resolve. Now we can see it's automatically populated the IP address for our server02 machine. So we'll click on OK, and then OK again. And now we're back on our server 02, so we'll hit refresh. And we can see that our secondary DNS server has in fact pulled a copy of the zone from the primary of server 01. Now so there you see our secondary server in action. Now to prove that this is in fact a secondary server, we can right click on our forward lookup zone, and we can select properties. Now here we can see the type is secondary. Now another way of identifying that you are in fact using a secondary server is to right click and you'll notice that we can't actually create any host records. Now the reason that we can't of course is because this is a read only copy of a zone which we've transferred from the primary. So of course we can't make any changes here. Alright, now we've looked at primary zones and we've looked at secondary zones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete my secondary zone I've created here and then we're going to go and create a stub zone. So again, we'll right click on our forward lookup zone and we'll choose new zone. Again, it starts up the new zone wizard and we've seen this multiple times now, so we'll run through this one pretty quickly. We'll choose a stub zone. We'll opt not to store it in Active Directory and we'll choose next. Again, we need to enter in the name of the zone. So ours is going to be testdomain.com and we'll choose next. We'll create the default file for our zone. We'll choose next. Again, we need to enter in the IP address of our DNS server, which is 192.168.0.11. We'll click Add, and we'll click Next, and we're done. So we'll go and click on our testdomain.com stub zone, and you'll notice that we only have a few records in here. We have the start of authority, a name server record, and a host record as well for our master server. Now an important distinction to make with our stub zone is that this zone will not contain any other host records. It won't pull them from our testdomain.com zone. But what it will pull is all of the name server records that point to the name server's authority for the testdomain.com domain. So anytime a host in our sales.testdomain.com domain wants to talk to another host in the testdomain.com domain, then it will forward all of its DNS queries over to server01. Now I just want to show you something else. I'm actually going to right click on our uh, stub zone and choose delete and I'll delete this here and I'm going to switch back to my primary DNS server. Okay I'm back on my primary DNS server. I'm going to right click on my testdomain.com and choose properties. Now we'll go up to our name servers tab and I'm going to remove our secondary server server02.sales.testdomain.com from the DNS properties. Now on our Zone Transfers tab, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to uncheck Allow Zone Transfers and click on OK. Of course it asks me if I do want to delete the legacy host record for our Server02. Well I'm just going to say no, I'm just going to leave it there. OK, now I'm back on my Server02. I'm going to right click again on my Forward Lookup Zone and select New Zone. I'll choose Next. Again I'm going to create a Stub Zone and I won't store this in Active Directory and I'll choose Next. Now we need to enter in our zone name and of course this will be testdomain.com and again I'll choose next. I'll leave the default zone file and choose next and now I need to enter in the IP address of our primary server which is 0.11 and choose add, next and finish.
Okay, now I'm going to click on our testdomain.com stub zone and you'll notice that we've pulled exactly the same information that we did before, even though we unchecked the box to allow zone transfers. Now, I wanted to point this out is because Microsoft documentation will tell you that you need to allow zone transfers in order to get this to work. But as you've just seen, that's not true. So there's a little discrepancy there between the documentation and what really happens on a Windows 2003 DNS server. So I thought it's best to point it out because if you do want to block zone transfers for people creating a stub zone, you'd be best blocking TCP port 53 at your firewall. Now something that you might like to do that's kind of cool is to set up stub zones for websites that you frequently use. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up a command prompt and then I'm going to type in nslookup. Now we'll type in set type equals ns and now at this point we can just type something in like yahoo.com and hit enter and as you can see it's returned all of the DNS servers that are authoritative for the yahoo.com zone. Now take note of one of the IP addresses that appear in this list. We'll right click on our forward lookup zones and we'll select new zone. Again we'll click next. We'll create a stub zone and we won't store this in active directory. And we'll choose next. And now we need to type in the name of the zone. So in our case we're going to type in yahoo.com. And we'll choose next. Now we'll leave the default DNS zone file. And we'll choose next. And now we need to enter in an IP address that we found listed here for the name servers of Yahoo. So we'll come back over here and we'll enter in 66.218.71.63 and then we'll choose add and now we'll choose next and finish. And now we'll go and click on our yahoo.com stub zone and we can see all of the name servers have been pulled from yahoo.com into our stub zone on our server. So by us having all these records present in our yahoo.com stub zone, this now means if we need to contact yahoo.com, we no longer have to go out to the internet to find the DNS servers for yahoo.com. That's because we have pointers to them already. And of course, another advantage of having a stub zone is that if yahoo.com happens to update their name servers to different IPs, then this will automatically update and remain current. Now I should point out here that if your target for this stub zone, in our case yahoo.com, doesn't allow TCP traffic through port 53 on their firewall, then this won't work. Now you should know by now that client queries are sent over UDP port 53, but secondary DNS servers and stub zones perform zone transfers over TCP port 53. And a lot of administrators don't like to leave TCP port 53 open, so bear that in mind if you run into any problems. Okay, we've now seen primary, secondary and stub zones in action. So what we'll do now is we'll go back to our primary server and then we'll create an Active Directory integrated primary zone. Okay, we're back on our primary server, server 01, so we'll right click on forward lookup zones and we'll select new zone. Okay, and this brings up again a very familiar wizard, so we'll choose next and we'll create a primary zone and this time we'll leave this checkbox which is to store our zone in Active Directory. And we'll choose next. Now this brings us to a screen that we haven't seen before and this is where we'll select how we want our DNS data to be replicated to our other DNS servers. Now we can choose to replicate this DNS zone information to every DNS server in our testdomain.com forest, to all DNS servers in our Active Directory domain, testdomain.com, or to all domain controllers in our Active Directory domain, testdomain.com. Now be careful with the first option because in a large forest this can include replicating DNS to other domains in different namespaces and child domains and so on. So make sure this is really what you want to do before selecting this option. Now next we can also choose to replicate our DNS data to all other DNS servers in our testdomain.com domain and that's kind of logical and here we can also replicate to all of our domain controllers in our testdomain.com domain regardless of whether they have DNS on them or not. Now if you do happen to have all Active Directory integrated servers you'll probably want to choose the second option. But the third option primarily exists for if you want to replicate DNS data to Windows 2000 DNS servers. So I'm going to choose the second option and I'm going to choose next. Now we've seen this screen before we have to provide a name of our zone so I'm going to choose testdomain.com and I'll click next. 
Now when we created non-active directory integrated zones, we had the option of allowing both non-secure and secure dynamic updates or not allowing dynamic updates at all. But with an active directory integrated zone, we have the option of allowing only secure dynamic updates. So if you are running an active directory integrated zone, make sure you select the secure dynamic updates and we'll choose that and we'll choose next and we're finished. And here we can see our active directory primary zone has now been created. So we'll go and do the same thing for our reverse lookup zone. So we'll right click, we'll select new zone, we'll choose next, we'll create a primary zone and store an active directory and we'll choose next. We'll choose to replicate only to our DNS servers that are in our testdomain.com domain and we'll choose next. Now we're entering our network ID which is 192.168.0 and we'll choose next. And again we'll only allow dynamic secure updates and we'll choose next and finish. So we'll go and expand our forward lookup zones and we'll see our testdomain.com active directory primary zone and we can also see our reverse lookup zone here. Okay, we've seen primary zones, secondary zones, stub zones and active directory integrated zones. Now I want to talk for a moment about delegation. Now on our network we currently have two domains, testdomain.com and sales.testdomain.com. So what we'll do is we'll set up a delegation so that any request for sales.testdomain.com that comes into this DNS server will be forwarded off to our sales.testdomain.com DNS server which is server 02. So first we'll jump back on our server 02 and we'll create an active directory integrated primary zone. Okay here we are we're back on server 2 so I'm going to right click on forward lookup zones and select new zone. We'll choose next. We'll create a primary zone which is stored in active directory and we'll choose next. We'll choose the second option again to replicate only to DNS servers in the sales.testdomain.com domain and we'll choose next. And now we need to enter in our zone name. So this will be sales.testdomain.com and we'll hit next. Again we'll choose the default option which is to allow only secure dynamic updates and we'll choose next and finish. Okay, now that our sales.testdomain.com primary Active Directory integrated zone has been created, we'll jump back now to our server 01 and we'll take a look at delegation. Okay, we're back on our primary server which is server 01. So we'll right click on our testdomain.com zone and we'll select new delegation. And this of course starts up another wizard, the new delegation wizard, so we'll click next. And the first thing we need to do is specify the DNS domain name that we want to delegate. So this will become sales and down here you can see the fully qualified domain name changes to represent sales.testdomain.com. So we'll choose next. And now we need to specify the name and IP address of the DNS server that we want to delegate sales.testdomain.com name queries to. So we'll click on add. Now at the top here we need to provide the name of our server which is server02 sales.testdomain.com and of course we need to provide the IP address which is 192.168.0.12 and we'll click add and now we'll click OK and we can see here that our server name and IP address has been put in for us so if that all looks correct we'll click next and then we'll click finish now over here on the left we can see a grey folder called sales has been created. Now the grey folder just gives us a visual cue that sales is a delegated DNS domain. So now requests that come into our network that ask for a host on the sales subdomain will hit our DNS server which will see that the sales subdomain has been delegated and it will forward the request onto the name server listed in the NS record. Now in our case that's server02.sales.testdomain.com. Now the only negative thing with delegation is that if the administrator managing the sales.testdomain.com domain adds a new DNS server then we won't know anything about it. In contrast if we had created a stub zone for this domain back on our primary we'd see any changes that were made to the zone. So as you can see delegating DNS to a subdomain is a pretty simple thing to do. But how can we actually prove that server01 is in fact using server02 
to resolve any host in the sales.testdomain.com domain. Well, that's kind of simple. We can come down here and click on Start, Administrative Tools, and then we'll launch the Network Monitor tool. And we'll just start a packet capture here. And in the meantime, we'll come down here and we'll open up a command prompt. And here we'll use our trusty NS Lookup to look up a host and the sales domain. So we'll type in NS Lookup and we'll try and get the IP address of a host named webserver.sales.testdomain.com. Okay, and we can see that server01 was the server that actually responded to this. We can see it came back with an IP address of 0 0.13. Now let's just stop our packet capture and we'll hit F12 to bring up the results. Okay, we'll scroll over here to the right and we can see here that our query for webserver.sales.testdomain.com came from our server01 and it went over here to this IP address with 0 0.12 which of course is our server02. And then of course our server02 responded back to our server01 with the IP address of the machine name web server in the sales.testdomain.com domain. So there you can see delegation in action. Now in this video we've taken a good look at forward and reverse lookup zones and we've created primary zones, secondary zones, stub zones and we've delegated DNS to other DNS servers. DNS can be one of the biggest headaches you'll experience in your network if you don't get it right, so spend a lot of time planning your DNS layout for your environment.